When I first came here, I could finally see that it's really okay just to be. No need to put on an act, try to paste on a mask of normalcy. That horrible feeling, don't let them know, don't let them see, is unnecessary here. No one's an outcast, everyone's free. You can be you and I can be me. We can feel what we feel, make friends with a peer, share what's inside us without shame or fear. We can do what we're able and give what we can with respect for the worth of each woman and man. Here I have found, after waiting so long, a place to be me, a place to belong. One thing that I have found out about mental illness is that it's a disease of isolation. We, we tend to isolate ourselves because of shame or um, the stigma of society about mental illness. Yeah. I'm a person that I don't have too many friends, that I'm very secluded most of the time. I had a lot of mood swings, or I'd sit in a I'd keep to myself and get depressed because you know I was feeling sorry for myself. I had this problem going on with that problem, and then I'd let it build up and I say I can't handle it no more. And you see, I worked for 30 years, sometimes six days a week, sometimes seven days a week, and I never thought I had a problem. Yeah. But people kept telling me they could see signs that I was headed for a nervous breakdown. And I wouldn't listen to nobody. What I feel mental illness is, is somebody that's born with a disability and that they got to work harder to um, overcome that disability and fit into the community. Because I had my life all planned, all the way down the line until retirement. And then when I got sick, everything fell apart. And now I'm just picking up the pieces here at the social club. you don't know where to turn to, your best bet is to find a friend. One of the greatest things is that this is a no pressure place um, to make friends. Sometimes you need more than just your family. Sometimes you need other friends. Sometimes you need something to look forward to like next Tuesday night we're going to the Festival of Lights. I can look forward to that and with all these things it keeps me from getting depressed and feeling bad about myself. I was in a shell. I didn't know where I was going, who I was. And when I came here, I was in the shower. I was afraid to talk to people when I first came, and uh, it's, it's taught me how to, how to do that. If you come and you don't know if you want to have fun yet, if you don't really feel like it, um, you can sit and watch and um, just get involved to the level that you want to. It's helped me get out of my shell. I talk to people now, I associate with people now, I'm getting more back into reality of life now. Um, I spent most of one year in the hospital and was in and out other years also. And just being able to come to a place where they don't make demands, where they would just help me do the simplest task. When I wasn't, when I didn't think I was able to do that, um, just even learning how to do a layout um, for our own newsletter was really difficult um, for me to think that I could do. But the caring help of um, a staff member just showing me how, letting me make mistakes, telling me, they were concentrating mostly on what I could do. They don't concentrate on what I can't do. We have a few hundred copies of our newsletter every month and we mail them out. We write the newsletter, lay it out, um, make the copies and collate them with the other two clubs and um, then we prepare them for bulk mailing and uh, we have to take them to the central post office and um, weigh them we send to a lot of different social clubs throughout New York State and day treatments in our area. Um, we send some to other states too, like Ontario, um, Ohio, 
California, and we send quite a few to um, New York City, and the social club is pretty big in New York, so we, we're on a mailing list, and we get their newsletters, and they get ours, and we get some different ideas from each other. There's always room for artwork for the members to do, and special articles. During the month of December, I wrote an article on AIDS for the club's newspaper. Matter of fact, my sister came home from the Army this past holiday. She read the article, and she said, she just told me, why not send it into the newspaper? Uh, I was thinking about it, and I talked to um, Dave about it, the guy that um, convinced me to write the, actually write the article, to do it, to go for it, you know, see what happens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Scary. Well, when I first joined the club here, they was having a member meeting, they was going to elect the president. And they was having a, a president and a secretary. And I asked them as a joke why they didn't have a, a, a vice president. And they said they never had one. So they said, how would you like the job? So I took it. Then the next time they uh, nominated me for president, I got it. And then this past time they nominated me again and I got it for the second time. And I think it's great. Uh, I got a lot of responsibilities. I take anything. The members wanted me to take the staff meeting, anything important. They want to know about the club or do with the club. Make sure the meeting runs smooth and everybody gets a chance to talk. Oh, here, here, let, me, let, no, 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 let, let me finish is, what I'm saying. Uh, let me finish what I'm saying. Uh, I cook here. I like to cook, and I don't have an apartment, and it gives me a chance to cook, you know, and uh, help out. I like to help people. They help me here, but I like it. I do the dishes. I like working with the staff. When I came to the club, I had recently left the hospital, and for me it was a shock going back home from the hospital. I didn't want to stay home because um, I, I would have got sick again. And the club gave me an incentive of being around with people, get to know people in the same environment, with the same experiences, maybe the same experience of being sick. One of the things that I can say is that I am a plant lover, that I really enjoy having plants around me. That's my nature because of the environment that I was brought up. My environment is Puerto Rico, and Puerto Rico is very tropical, and because it's tropical, uh, we enjoy plants 20, uh, 24 hours a day and 365 days a year, you know, it's, uh, it's a constant beauty but it doesn't go away. It's a, it's a common weed in Brazil, but it's quite beautiful. This is, this is called a uh, rabbit's paw because of the little spots. I was introduced uh, to the greenhouse by, by one of the staff members, Peter Martin, and Peter introduced me to the different plants that are there in the greenhouse, and he, he taught me what kind of um, responsibilities he had in the greenhouse. At the same time, I learned from him the different methods of watering the plants, uh, cutting and uh, pruning, and how to uh, multiply the amount of uh, different plants that we have in the greenhouse. In the jungle, these grow on trees. 
and they actually just ramble along the trees. The roots are exposed. The rain will wash down the roots. It'll wash down food from rotting debris up, up higher in the tree, bird droppings, and that's how they feed. But here, we stick them in pots, and they grow. Um, give this, this guy could use a little water. It's not like, you know, owning a nursery and selling, the, like, you know, I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, but it, it gives people a chance to get out and communicate with people in the public and talk about what they grow here. And we do make some money that we put back into our, our greenhouse budget. Tell them where you sell them. We sell them at the thrift store in Buffalo State. And our thrift store is located on Grand Potomac. Restoration Society Complex has um, three social clubs in our area. And also they have this Thrifty Threads, which is basically a thrift store that's run by the members of the social clubs. And what we have around here, we have uh, Kevin and we have Paul. And they've worked in um, keeping the place clean and organizing. The, they take the clothes in when they're dirty and they, they wash them and then we put them on racks and then we sell them to the public at, at reduced rates. Say this one here. The cut's not too, too uh, far gone from what we wear these days and with the styles the young people have, they come in here and they put together like a mix and match type of thing. Like they can find uh, different, different things that they like. Where do you get these books from? People get, uh they move or have it up in the attic, and it gets that wet or something, you know, to dry out, like, you know, so, so they give us, give us to us, they let them go to waste, you know. Sometimes I thought that I thought so, I, I passed him from the floor, I, I wake it up. But, you know, I like it, I like it here, you know. I'd say, um, okay, um, the Twenty cents. Twenty cents. Yeah. It's not but I learned how to uh, how to deal with the cash register where we keep all the money. And that's the biggest responsibility we have in the green, in the snack bar. It helped me because I've never dealt with a cash register before. And I got my knowledge. It's how to deal with cash how to deal with the inventory and uh, what things we should know about the snap bar, you know. I like it when it's busy and I don't, I don't sit down. Yeah. And there's a lot of people and they come and ask for, ask for pop or coffee or whatever and there is a lot more to it, you know, it's a joy, you know, working, especially on Tuesdays or, or Fridays, there are dances or there is a special event. Friendship and Westside wanted to get together with us to have a big party oh, here. Sounds good. Which kind of a party should we have? Well, I don't know, but Willie kind of wanted to have a nerd party. Yeah, that's a good idea. Revenge of the Nerds. I seen it on television. So I told Mary Lou, I said, let's see if we can have a nerd party at the club. You know, that's a good idea, so we're having a nerd party. Oh, Person? Yes. Just have to be big meals and easy meals. So you don't want to have a meat. You can't have the same thing all the time. No, but you can't have. If you're gonna have a meat on a Tuesday or Friday, you're gonna go broke buying the meat. We got beets. Yeah. We got. Where's, where's the peaches? Where's the peaches? Sharon? Yes? Scratch off the canned corn. We have some. This 
is a good one here, Jaws, the Revenge. And the new tomato. If you wanted to eat your tomato tomorrow, which one do you think you'd buy? I take this one right here because tomorrow, tomorrow this one will be just enough time to write. I think this, this one, one would be. For tomorrow, yeah, you'd want this oh, one. Oh, tomorrow you'd want this one. Right. But if you were going to eat this one next week, you'd want this one to give it enough time to write it. Right, right. Very good. Sharon, how's it feel to be member of the month? Exciting. It's the first time anybody ever She's noticed happy. me. Yeah. Well, once a month we have a first we honor a member, uh, member of the month we call it. We make them sit by a funny place now and a wear a weird hat all day. Uh, through a consensus of the club members, we choose somebody and we write an article about them in the newsletter. And then we pick a special day where we'll have a, a special lunch and we usually do something special like a dessert that they like or something like that. We want to acknowledge a person's efforts uh, as opposed to, uh, you know, their achievement. Uh, I, I think it's real important. We honor people a lot here. After lunch we'll clap for people. One time we set everybody up on stage to honor somebody. It's also... Uh, it kind of acknowledges a person at the club that that uh, is a real role model. It's a person that has a real level of commitment to the club. They're, they're, they reach out to other members. Uh, they're a real good example. Hello, Elwood Social Club. Can I help you, please? Hold on just a minute. What time are you open to? Tonight. Thursday, five o'clock. Uh, Answer the phone. I like that. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Five o'clock Thursday. Oh, I didn't match the. Press the button. I didn't press the button. No. Press the button. I, did, I gotta press the button first. I'm accepted here. Whatever I am. Many people come in here just for the heck of it, just to find out what are the four walls. The club is not the four walls that we are. The club is us, the members. This has helped me keep my sanity and helps me get along in everyday life, coming to the club. And there's somebody here that will listen. I don't think there's anybody in this room that would, that would turn you away. I don't want to go back to whatever happened to me before. I just want to go forward, and the club is helping me to do that. I wish there would be a lot more clubs like this for a lot of people. But this club means an awful lot to me, because it did help me come back to reality again. Hey, buddy. Well, I hope more people can come and share their experiences.